cooking, we cooking, we cooking, we cooking, we cooking, we cooking, we cooking, everybody's cooking, we cooking, we cooking, we cooking, we cooking, we promote local agriculture and local business, we cooking, we cooking, we cooking, we cooking, we support local fishermen and local Greetings! Welcome again to We Cooking, Eclectic Vinci Cuisine. We're here at Spirit of the Valley Yoga Retreat, the business and home of Rachel Punet. She's welcome, We Cooking. Come and see what she does. So we're right here in Rachel's kitchen. Thank you for hosting us today. You're very welcome, Empress. Rachel, tell us a little bit about making your home into a business. This is such a beautiful place up here in Queensbury. Tell us, tell our audience a little bit about your home. Uh, well, I was born here and this is the house I grew up in. And my father planted a lot of fruit trees with the idea to be self-reliant. And he actually discovered a spring in the mountains behind us which made it possible for us to live up here so all the water is spring water we're so lucky oh you're blessed i mean the water is just so fresh and tasty right yes. coming right straight in the tap mm -hmm. yeah so you today you're going to share some of your recipes with us so tell us what's the first thing you're going to do for us here well the first thing i'm going to do is cocoa tea so this is a chocolate drink and i use i the same methods as the Amerindians would, um, hence the chili. And then I put a few cardamom pods in, I crush them first, some cloves, a cinnamon stick, and some ginger, which is an anti-inflammatory, as is chocolate. So this chocolate is locally produced. That's what I was going to ask. I wanted to make sure of that because I know yeah. being a um, self-sustaining, self-sufficient woman, I would imagine because I have seen um, some cocoa trees in the area also, mm -hmm. cocoa plants. So I, I imagine that that's being grown here and, pro and made here. Yeah. So tell us a little more about that. Uh, well, they take the seeds from the cocoa pod and you can eat the, the white gooey fruit that's around the seeds and it's, it's completely different but it's delicious and then you bake the seeds in the oven or I imagine some people put them in the hot sun and so on and then you have to pound them and crush them and form sticks mm -hmm. so this is just convenient to sell so these come in packs of three mm -hmm. I try only to buy local produce and then you grate this and add all these ingredients. And then you add, the most important of all is the salt. Uh, so I put in a good pinch of salt because it brings out the flavor of the chocolate. And, and I know you're going to tell me that this is local salt also, of course. It, well, it is sea salt. Yes. And we do get sea salt from Union. Yeah. Yes, so it is. And then I add some of this water. This is just to dissolve the chocolate. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter how much. It's just to cook it for about 20 minutes. So I put a good bit in there and then put it on the fire to boil. Okay. And this is just the first stage. So. Okay, my, when we make cocoa tea, mm -hmm. we usually, I, we do use the water, but um, we add coconut milk to that. Is that is that included in your recipe also? Well, once this is boiled and the chocolate has dissolved and the flavors have come out into, into the liquid, then we do the next uh, stage, which is adding the coconut milk. Yeah, I would imagine that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to tasting that. You know, um, I gotta hear, um, Rachel's mentioning the importance of using the local products that we have here. And I do remember um, someone from this region. I'm pretty sure, and I, I know you've heard of uh, Captain Guy. Oh, yes. Yeah. I've been to his house. 
Yeah, yeah. so that, that's whose cocoa, the first cocoa that I've had here is from um, Captain Guy. He's a um, nanogenarian, but he still gets up and he goes to his garden regularly. I was introduced to him by Vani, mm -hmm. uh, Vani Mudet, and he's, he really works with the youth well, showing them how to use the local products like cocoa and, and uh, farine, you mm -hmm. know, the cassava and so on. Mm -hmm. And I know you have a cassava recipe for us yeah. today too, right? Yes, I do. So um, in a few, we're going to um, let Rachel show us how to finish up the cocoa tea, and she has some other recipes that she's going to share with us. Rachel's going to show us uh, another one of her special recipes, which is um, banana fritters. Rachel, tell us about this recipe. Well, Empress, I'm using some plantains from the garden. So plantains are a relative of banana, and it's very hard to tell them apart. Uh, we usually make banana fritters, but some people make plantain fritters um, with ginger in. So I tried it, and I think it's delicious. So I've creamed up, I've uh, liquidized two plantains in here already. Do you use um, the more ripe ones? Because I see this one's a little greener. Than this is just to show you what they look like, but these were the ripest one. Okay. of the hand. And okay. here's some ginger. This is from at, from the garden. Nice. And so I've grated that, so I'm just going to put all of that in there. Yeah, ginger is really good for you. It's uh, antioxidant. Yeah really flavors up your food so yeah, yeah. an anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. we really should try and use ginger every day in our diets I agree yeah definitely agree and then here's a uh, egg from somebody who has some chickens down the road okay so I buy my eggs from them okay just curious though if um, someone doesn't eat eggs um, so what would you use as a substitute? Is, is that a binding agent of some kind for it or is... Yeah, well, if you don't eat eggs, I, I believe that bananas themselves are an egg sub substitute, aren't they? Okay, so, so you can it, eliminate the egg. Yeah. For those folks who don't eat eggs, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to add an egg to this recipe, right? No, okay. I'm sure you don't, but okay. uh, I haven't tried it without. And then some of the sea salt from the grenadines. Okay. Put that in. Okay, so so far it's two ripe plantains, uh, one egg, which is optional for folks who don't eat eggs, a little sea salt. Mm -hmm. and, and here we've got some breadfruit flour that we made right here in this kitchen. So. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that you can make breadfruit flour and I learned that, I learned how to make breadfruit flour from Captain Guy yeah. too. He, he's yeah. the man, um, you know, that really brought this to life here in St. Oh, yes. Vincent. He made and, his wedding cake Right, I was going to tell you flour. about that story. He tells you about old Nyrene and the whole, that the, the country at that time, St. Vincent, could not get flour. Yeah. And so he needed to make a cake for his own wedding. And so he made made it from breadfruit flour. and. I'm sure you know all the amazing things now, by now, yeah. what can be done with breadfruit flour. You're finding out uh, a lot of, lately that a lot of people are allergic to wheat. Yes, and, uh, um, my daughter is, and this, yeah. is, this is sparks my interest, especially because I had to find another way to fill her up. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we have spelt flour, mm -hmm. So we use a bit of this, but this stuff is extremely expensive. So And so what is spelt? It's well it's an ancient relative of modern wheat. Okay. So we use that. Uh, I'm looking at how the food that you cook also connects with this retreat, you know? Um, the environment is really beautiful and when you have your fresh fruits and your fresh veggies that you grow also. I, I understand that your cousin um, Luke is close by. He does yeah. uh, permaculture or get all organic farming. So I can't wait for us to get into the garden and have a good time. So what else is needed? That's it. Like it's about ready. So now then. it's ready. 
yeah. to pop into the frying pan, fry it in sizzling butter. Mm. I can't wait. Oh yeah. Can't wait. Two islands and keys are waiting to be discovered. Take a look at us now. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. Our company, the Black Cake Company, we bake and sell traditional Caribbean rum cakes and black cakes. I'm originally from Barbados, and so my grandmother made the cakes, my mom did. We are committed to keeping a family and cultural tradition alive. Beat the holiday rush and use promo code BLACK2014 at blackcake.com to get one free miniature cake with each full-size cake order today. It's a must at every table for every celebration. CK Grace and Company is the number one. about this valley yes. and um, you know just how you got into yoga well Empress when I was five years old my father and my mother did yoga back in the 70s and I used to join in for fun and we had a parrot then and the parrot used to do yoga as well <laughs> Yeah, if we were all lying on our backs, the parrot would be on its back with its legs in the air. You can entertain guests, right? I mean, you yes, have people coming we have people coming many, here. many guests from America and England, Barbados, Trinidad. Uh, they've come and they've pitched tents in the garden. They've stayed in the main house. We also have a house built from bottles and conch shells in the garden. We rent that out. You have a special recipe that you're going to make for us today. Tell us about your ingredients and what you're going to make for us. All right. Well, this is cassava grown in the garden. This is just a small one. One of them um, was this big. <laughs> and you just scrape it because you don't want to be peeling away a lot of the goodness that's close to the, this on the skin surface. Okay, so cassava is a root plant? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and then we have a cayenne pepper. Um, and this is saib. All of this is grown in the garden. Good. Yeah, and That's we have good. some cheese as well, some cheddar cheese. Okay. That's so, vegetarian cheddar. So what's in this bag so here? This is the cassava. Once I peel this, I feed it through the juicer, the vegetable juicer. Mm -hmm. But instead of drinking the juice, you're using all the grated gubbins that comes out the back. So it's a wonderful way to grate cassava. Mm -hmm. So then you end up with What's this. The fiber? Yeah, with the fiber, mm -hmm. which you put into a strong tea towel, like this is linen, yeah. and you squeeze it. So you really squeeze as much as you can out of it. And this cassava is the sweet cassava. Okay. It's important to use that one. And the stuff that you squeeze out, if you leave that, that's how they make starch. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's always a few bits that don't get grated, so I just go through it. And I've taken a 
um, a big pan, well, not too big, like a tablespoon of salt. Mm -hmm. And I've put it in here and I've really worked it through so that it's evenly distributed. Okay, for folks who don't use salt in their yeah. cooking, is there an alternative that you could use or do you have to have salt in the recipe or? Um, I personally use salt because we live in the Caribbean and we're sweating a lot and we need salt. Okay. And I have low blood pressure, so I really don't ever think about salt. Okay. Because there are folks who don't eat with salt, yeah. or well, even though it's natural sea salt and so on, yeah. they still eliminate that out of their diet right. and make it a real ital. Yeah. You know. So, right. would you add some herbs to it, maybe, yeah. or like some yeah. thyme, some fine thyme, or yeah. something like that? That might be a substitute. Right. Good idea. Okay. So I kind of just put it out of my hand like that, mm -hmm. and I take a pinch of the chopped chives, mm -hmm. locally it's known as thighs, uh -huh. and you put a bit of pepper according to taste, okay. and then a dollop of the cheddar cheese. Okay. Cheddar. Does it have to be cheddar? Can you use other types of cheese? It's what I use because yes. here in St. Vincent, um, we don't get a huge choice of cheeses and so on. So this is the one I like because it's, it says vegetarian. Have you ever thought about making your own cheese? I have made my own cheese. Oh, great. But not hard cheese. Okay. I made uh, the cottage cheese. I make that all the time. Okay. It's really easy to yeah. make. <laughs> and I made butter. Okay, I'd love for you to show our, our viewers how to do that with uh, maybe another time. Yeah, I'd love to do that. You know, yeah. where we can learn how to make some uh, butter and cheese from uh, our local milk. Cassava is the way to go, and I use a lot of farine. Uh -huh. I like to mix that with the zavoca. Zavoca, with the yeah. Avocado. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, I like the the balmy too when it's made in the the cake. The, I can't remember bam, what you bam. call. The bomb bomb, right? Mm -hmm. In in Haiti, when we, we we don't call it bomb bomb, we call it straight up cassav. Oh. And in Haiti, what we do with that bomb bomb, it's a snack that's usually made um, for kids for energy. Yeah. Uh, we put peanut butter yeah. on the bomb bomb. And yeah. if we're doing with for children, we'd pour a little honey on that and yeah. serve that. And for those who like a taste, we add a little watercress. But for the adults, what we do is the, we put the peanut butter, mm -hmm. then some nice watercress, mm -hmm. zabuca, and we have a, like a pickled pepper called pickles, and we put that, we top that on there, and it's just absolutely delicious. So there are many different things that. that you know you could do with cassava. It's, yeah. it's a very versatile uh, um, root and very yeah. nutritious too. Oh, yeah. You know all this fiber you need in your body to mm -hmm. you know really clean you out. Yeah. You know, and, and nourish you. Many of the great folks here who are now lawyers, doctors, mm -hmm. um, teachers, heads of state and so on, they came from an agrarian base. Yeah. They came from their families were farmers who work really hard, fisher folk who work really hard to put them through those law schools and those grad schools. So yeah. we, we I, and I'm so happy that you chose the word celebrate because mm -hmm. that's what we should be doing, celebrating the, 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 the bounty mm -hmm. and of the freshness and um, the beauty that the Creator bless us with, you know, yeah. in St. Vincent and throughout the Caribbean. Yeah. You know, that's, that's there's still right. places where people are doing this, you know, growing their food and really enjoying um, having this. So after you make um, these, how many, however many you make, what, what's the next step then? Uh, what, well then I put them in the oven at about 200 degrees centigrade and bake them for up to an hour till they get browned and then you drizzle honey over them. Ooh, I and local wait. honey is the best honey. Two islands and keys are waiting to be discovered.
Take a look at us now. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. Our company is the Black Cake Company. We bake and sell traditional Caribbean rum cakes and black cakes. I'm originally from Barbados, and so my grandmother made the cakes, my mom did. We are committed to keeping a family and cultural tradition alive. Beat the holiday rush and use promo code BLACK2014 at blackcake.com to get one free miniature cake with each full-size cake order today. It's a must at every table for every celebration. CK Grace and Company is the number one. Welcome back to We Cook In with Empress at Spurge the Valley Yoga Retreat. I'm Rachel Panette and Empress and I have been having a lot of fun this morning creating some local delicacies. So we have some cassava balls here, which I'm going to just drizzle some honey on. May I? Yes. Alright. Would you, you like me to drizzle the honey please. when it's... I hope I can get more than one. Alright. Okay. Oh. So, these are the same ones you've been working on. Oh. Uh huh. Mm hmm. What do you think of that, Empress? Really Empress nice. is impressed. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I want a little more honey, though. Okay. Pour a little bit in here for me. This is really, really delicious. Yeah. Is that good? The sweetness combined with the hot chili pepper mm -hmm. gives the cassava mm, really nice. Try your hand. I'm glad they came out all right. Mm -hmm. The honey really brings out the, the different flavors in it, mm -hmm. you know? Nice texture too, not too hard, mm -hmm. you know? And mm. you got some cocoa tea here too. Mm. That's, um, mm. this is so delicious. Why are we Thank cooking? You. I'm getting so fat <laughs> from eating all this good local food and we still haven't finished yet. Let me taste your cocoa tea. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's the real local stuff, real cocoa. You added the milk, of course, because I can taste that coconut milk in there and all the nice little spices that you put in there. Oh, this is so... And I was very careful not to boil the coconut milk mm -hmm. when I added it at the end right. because that just makes it just go very thin. And you get it the flavor. It. You so get the real flavor of the coconut milk too when it's not um, yeah. boiled. True, mm -hmm. and it's healthier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. So I don't want to seem greedy, but I'm ready to jump on that banana fritter right now. Yeah, and you notice that it's I put... so inviting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We put moringa flowers mm -hmm. from the moringa olifera tree. We have a few in the ground here. And the flowers are edible. You can make tea with them. Dive right in there. Right, right in there. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And as she's saying, moringa flowers have great nutritional value. Yes, all of While the I'm moringa. eating, tell them about it. Yeah, the moringa olifera tree is the most nutritious plant on earth ever studied. And, and I have to add, not only nutritious, but tasty. The flowers are just yeah. delicious. Let me taste those fritters. Talk about the moringas more. So 
you dry the leaves from the moringa tree it's very very simple to grow the tree and it's a beautiful tree it constantly has these flowers on it and you dry the leaves and just keep them in your kitchen put them in your food or in your tea make a tea with them and I'm not sure about the exact values but if you have say four ounces of dried moringa leaves I think it's like having seven oranges and a pint of milk you know all of these things is just highly highly nutritious and it's actually turning around malnutrition in Africa and in Haiti too yeah oh wow I exactly. This banana, or is it plantain fritter, mm -hmm. is so good that I have to taste another one in order to tell you how much better it is. Yeah. Along with the moringa flour. For it. I'm on, you gotta have some too. <laughs> this is, I'm fresh, on we cooking, eclectic Vinci cuisine, right here at Spirit of the Valley Yoga Retreat with Rachel Punet and I'm just having this orgasmic time over this food here because it's just delicious, really fresh. My cocoa tea, the cassava balls, and my plantain fritters. All of it made by Rachel Punet right here on We Cooking. Good local food. So that's why we support local, eat local, buy local. Don't forget, right here on We Cooking. Eclectic Vinci Cuisine. Come again.